What's going on everybody, welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, and I do hope you lot are doing well. Welcome to today's video, which is a really interesting thought experiment, and you're going to have to bear with me on this one, on whether young Chelsea star Mason Mount would make the perfect false nine for Chelsea, and would actually make the team a lot better. Now, I know Chelsea fans and football fans are going to think about how the false nine didn't suit Chelsea, and why push a midfielder up there, but we'll get into it, just trust me. Before we do get into today's video, I want to request that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notifications icon, because you know what? I upload every single day, and I don't want you guys to miss out on anything, so please do that, and why not like the video? Right, I need to preface this video and offer the disclaimer of, this was not my idea. I spoke to one of my mates on Twitter, Dan and Flirty, and he explained, how he was discussing this concept with his brother and we sort of spoke about it for a little bit and he suggested that I do a video about it and you know what it is interesting so here I am so there's a few reasons why I think this could suit Chelsea incredibly well now let's start with the formation itself with a false nine a modern say elite football team will play a 4-3-3 it's what Liverpool play with Firmino, and it's what Guardiola tr often tries to play with Raheem Sterling. Chelsea have had a negative experience playing the full sign system. Antonio Conte and Sarri both tried it with Eden Hazard, and usually the main reason of playing it is because Eden Hazard didn't offer anything defensively, and these Italian coaches wanted the defensive solidity of their wingers doing defensive work. So, you know, they'd play Pedro, they'd play Willian, they'd do defensive graft, and Hazard would play up front in the false nine. It works maybe a small handful of times, but generally it kind of wasted Hazard's best attributes and Chelsea fans will know it was a pretty negative experience. But we'll get on to why it could be positive. Firstly, let's talk about the 4-3-3. One of the most important players for Chelsea Football Club, certainly last season under Sarri, and in terms of how good they look like they could be in the Premier League or how perfectly built they are for the Premier League, is Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Now over the years at Chelsea, Ruben's been put in different positions. He's been put as a sort of second striker by Conte. He's been put in the number 10 by various coaches. He's been played as a deep six. But the truth is, Ruben Loftus-Cheek does his best work in the left centre mid role. So, Chelsea's most functioning midfield last season was the midfield three of Jorginho at the base, and Golo Kante on the right, and Ruben Loftus-Cheek on the left. Now it does look like Frank Lampard still likes to play that midfield with Jorginho at the base and Golo Kante on the right, still doing more probably defensive interceptive work than he did under Sarri, but as well as still getting forward with his newfound skill set. But Lampard's been playing maybe Kovacic in that left centre mid role, maybe Mount, but it doesn't really suit Mount because Mount's more of a number 10. So when Ruben Loftus-Cheek comes back to fitness, if he could play in that left centre mid role again, combining with, say, Emerson on the left and another talented wide forward like Pulisic in front of him, that would be perfect for Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Frank Lampard, Chelsea FC in general. He was the game changer often, especially when Eden Hazard couldn't be, the kind of player that got players off their feet, combining on the left hand side, driving from deep and being a superstar in that left centre mid spot. So when Frank Lampard was appointed and we were looking at his formations and him bringing in the number 10s like Barkley and Mount, that was my biggest concern. How is Ruben Loftus-Cheek going to be brought back into the team? But if he can be brought back into the team in the spot where he thrived most, that would be perfect. So, what does that mean for the surrogate son of Frank Lampard, the number 10, the system where he wants to play that kind of player? Well, this is where the interesting theory comes in. Just because false nines haven't worked for Chelsea, doesn't mean they don't work generally. In fact, they can work incredibly well, and if you're going to have a high pressing, fast passing, direct attacking team, they can work incredibly well. So, Enter the example Roberto Firmino of Liverpool. Firmino is the quintessential successful 
false nine, the little technical player that kind of joined as an attacking midfielder and essentially is a number 10, but plays in wide attacking forwards and is very technical and gets goals himself. Now, think about Mason Mount, the attacking midfielder that can get goals himself, similar build, technical, good at playing other people in. Hmm. Chelsea also have very talented wide forwards just as Liverpool do, and really, if Mason Mount can drop deeper and occupy pretty much the same space as he does as a number 10, but he's playing in Callum Hudson-Odoi, he's playing in Christian Pulisic, all the older boys in Willian and Pedro, it's starting to look like a really, really interesting concept. Now, this whole conversation probably wouldn't be brought up at all if Chelsea had an elite you know, 90 million pound striker that gets 20 goals, 25 goals every single season, and it's not a problem. You wouldn't want to sort of jeopardize that. So you'd think, okay, it'd be a cool thought experiment, but you know what, we can't drop Aguero or Harry Kane or whatever top tier striker Chelsea may have theoretically had. Chelsea don't have that striker, and in fact, the number nine, or certainly the conventional number nine, has been a problem for Chelsea for so long. Interesting, right? Sure, Chelsea could still play 4-4-2 Diamond, maybe play Michy and Tammy every now and again, but you know what? If Frank Lampard really believes in Mason Mount that much to be this technical gifted player that plays in that space, he could absolutely play like a false nine system playing in the wide forwards. Take Roberto Firmino out of that Liverpool side and watch them play. They are awful. Even in the Super Cup before he had to come on against Chelsea, Liverpool were a different team when Roberto Firmino came on. And he's not necessarily like a Galactico goal scorer or anything, he just makes it all function but he's got the quality himself, he can get the assists, he can get the goals but he can make everyone tick and he's very good in possession, that's what Mount does. When Mount's being taken down in the box and he still pops off a shot, he can do that or he can play in a teammate to then get a goal. He could be the perfect number nine and be the star man for Chelsea. Frank Lampard wants him to be the star man for Chelsea. And this also would be a system that really nurtures the wingers. And if you think about it, Chelsea have got academy starlet Callum Hudson-Odoi, who they want to be one of the main men going forward. And obviously they have the huge money investment in Christian Pulisic. This type of formation and approach would be nurturing both those investments going forward, while still making the academy lad Mason Mount, who Frank Lampard loves so much, pivotal. If you want to be a really truly elite team in modern football, this is a really good formation and a really good approach. So, stylistically in the Premier League and indeed modern football today, it suits incredibly well. Stylistically, looking at the current Chelsea squad, it suits incredibly well. I'm not saying Frank Lampard should drop a striker system and employ this, but it is an incredibly interesting thought experiment when you consider the skill set of Mason Mount, the skill set of the wide forwards, the current personnel at Chelsea and the lack of a proper you know elite number nine and remember go back to how important this formation and approach would be for players like Ruben Loftus-Cheek who is an absolutely incredibly important player to Chelsea for my money. It's kind of just like a concept theory that fixes every problem and really works to the benefits of this Chelsea team. I know it seems pretty wild and Michy and Tammy might not be so happy about it, but it's certainly something that should be considered as an option. Frank Lampard's midfielders will still arrive late into the box and run from deep Frank Lampard style, but that could be N'Golo Kante, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, and even Mount if he had been sort of um, occupying a deeper space at the time. But in terms of building up offensive play and playing in possession in the final third, a false nine system could work perfectly with Mason Mount playing that role, feeding in his young teammates Pulisic and hudson Adoy. And also you could still have that wonderful left-hand side combination between Emerson and Ruben Loftus-Cheek advancing forward and then combining with, I guess, you know, hudson Adoy up there. It just all sounds so awesome, doesn't it? It is an interesting thought experiment at the very least. So when I had that conversation on Twitter, I figured, yes, you know what? I will make a video about this and I will pose the question to the channel audience and ask what your thoughts are. Do you think this is a really interesting experiment? Do you think it could work? 
you know, all the reasons that I've listed off, Ruben Loftus-Cheek playing in his best position, getting the best out of our young, talented wingers, probably maybe even getting the best out of Mason Mount, and the fact how Chelsea don't have an elite 20-25 goal striker to drop. Do you agree with me? Get down in the comments. Do you think another player could do it? There was always talk about Pedro, but for me, if you look at the personnel and look at Mount's qualities and Frank Lampard's belief in him, maybe that could be superb. Get down in the comments, let me know your thoughts and, you know, express your feelings on the formations in general. If you have enjoyed this video, everyone, please do like the video. And again, I want to remind you to subscribe because I am uploading videos every single day on football therapy and i don't want you guys to miss out on any content remember that you can also follow yours truly on social media well on instagram and twitter and that is at football yannick at football yannick give us a follow other than that ladies and gentlemen i'm going to keep it moving so i hope you have enjoyed today's video you lot enjoy the football and i will See you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry I don't. I love me baby.